Hi, my name is Adam and I'm an addict. I started using when I was 13. Um, I used all the way up until I was 25. I used everything from marijuana, alcohol, cocaine, prescription pills, heroin and meth and crack. I did, I did everything, you name it, I've done it. I tried to get clean a few different times. Uh, it took me three years and five different treatment centers to put together any, any amount of clean time. And um, I sat down with you guys, you know, about six months ago or so. And at that time I had about 18 months clean. Today I have almost 26 months clean. And uh, you know, life's good. I, I, I work in treatment. Uh, I got a promotion at my job since the last time I talked to you guys. Um, I'm working with the alumni from the rehab that I went through. It's uh, really rewarding to see these newcomers, you know, get out of treatment and you see them around at meetings and they're staying connected. They're attending alumni events. And, but the flip side of that, it's really kind of depressing as well because a lot of people, you know, don't make it. And you want everybody to make it. Um, being around for you know a couple of years now, I know not everybody makes it, and it's just it doesn't make it any easier. And you know, knowing that you know that's kind of the way it is, people go back out because that's what we do. We use and drink despite any and all consequences, and so that sometimes that messes with my you know peace of mind. And um, you know I just got to realize that it's not it's nothing I can't control. It's one of those things that's out of my control and. When I start freaking out about it and letting it like eat away at me, you know, that's, that's messing with my inner chi and I just have to take a step back and realize, you know, the only thing I'm able to control is what's inside of me, you know, my, like what's in my bubble per se. It kind of sucks sometimes because you just want to like shake them, you know, you just want to shake them and they, and they don't get it and, you know, unfortunately a lot of these kids are young and, you know, they're doing heroin and one more time can be their last and it's just so, it's so sad to see families going through that and, it's heartbreaking, you know. I've gone through two separate funerals in the past month from kids I know, and it's just terrible, you know. I think one was 29 and one was like 22, like young kids, and it's just one more time was their last, and you know, that kind of scares me, and then it pushes me to do better, you know, to call my sponsor, to work my steps, to go to more meetings, to be of service, to, you know, do everything I can so my family doesn't have to go through that, that kind of heartache. And, I stay connected. I, I play softball with a group of guys who are clean and sober, you know, a couple nights a week. You know, I, I do H&I work, which is hospitals and institutions, a couple nights a week. You know, I go to meetings at least, you know, three, maybe four times a week on top of my H&I. &I. I live with the guy who's in recovery. I, I base my life around my recovery, not my recovery around my life. And that's what I have to do in order to, you know, make it another day. And every day that I go to bed, you know, I, I, I thank God for another day sober. Um, when I wake up in the morning, I, I ask for strength to keep me sober another day, and I meditate. And It's not so much a daily struggle anymore, but sometimes, you know, you have a bad day, and when, when, a, when a drug addict like me has a bad day, it's unfortunate that the option to use is always on the table. It's never not going to be an option, you know. It's always, it's always the last option, but it's still an option, and, and, and it's, it's always going to be there, you know, because I'm an addict, you know, through and through. There's every fiber of my being's an addict, and I'm going against the grain, you know, staying sober. And, and it's just, it's one day at a time, as cheesy as it sounds. As much as I hated that saying in the beginning, you know, oh, just one day at a time. Like, just fuck you, you know, like, it's true. And, and sometimes it's minute by minute. And working with newcomers, you realize that that you know it is minute by minute for them sometimes and it is just one day at a time and you can't be freaking out of what's around the corner and and you just have to take it as it is in stride and just have faith that it all work out the way it's supposed to be and um, I look at the recovery as like a journey with no destination if I stay clean today I don't know what tomorrow will bring what a week will bring what a year will look like if I go get loaded tonight you know God forbid knock on wood I will know exactly what tomorrow will look like, what a week will look like, and if I'm alive, you know, what a year will look like. And it's not, it's not worth it to trade the unknown of recovery for the known misery, you know, of getting loaded. So today I'm free from active addiction. Um, what that looks like to me is, as you know, I'm free. I'm able to do, go out and do anything I want. You know, I, I have no, I have no restrictions. I don't have to be tied down to a dope man or anything like that, you know, tied to a specific area of town. I'm able to um, go camping and kayaking. We did that, you know, and that's like cliff jumping and went to Arizona hot springs and go paintballing. And, you know, I have this group of friends that on the weekends we like to go out, you know, and go up to like Fossil Creek and do all these, you know, adventures. And 
all this stuff that when I was using, I was unable to do, you know? I didn't have any desire to do it. And, and today I, I, wanna, I wanna go explore. I wanna, I wanna be outside. I wanna, you know, play Pokemon Go and walk around like 10 miles, you know? It's like, I would have never done any of that when I was getting loaded. It's such, a, it's such an amazing feeling, you know? I can't even really describe how, how, it, how it feels to, you know, be free and to have things, you know, and have this inner peace and this inner, inner joy that I never did when I was using and to be accepting of myself, let alone of others, you know? And so like coming up in October, I get to go hike Havasupai Falls in the Grand Canyon. That's gonna be awesome. You know, I get to enjoy myself and not have to worry about my next fix. I don't have to worry about being dope sick or anything like that. And it's just such an amazing feeling not being stuck to a bottle, a pipe, a needle, you know? it's. To be able to get up and go, you know, if I wanted to go to Flagstaff, I could just go to Flagstaff and not have to worry about anything because I don't have to worry about anything today. It's all taken care of with my faith. And, and you know, in the past six months, I've grown a lot. Um, I was kind of semi-homeless for a minute. Um, I was couch surfing and I was in between places. And, you know, a couple of my friends were freaking out about it, like stressing hardcore, and I really didn't care that much. I was, I had faith it all work out and it did, you know, it all. It all worked out the way it was supposed to. And living, you know, in God's will is was foreign to me in the beginning, but today there's no other way to live. It's it's what I do on a daily basis that keeps me keeps me going. When I live on my will, it's it's not pretty. You know, I I, I, I use drugs for one. I make bad choices. I hurt people I love. End up in jail. You know, I do all these terrible things that that I don't want to do. I'm not a bad person when I use, I'm a sick person. I'm a person who does bad things when I get high. I'm not a bad person. And, it, and that was hard for me to, to grasp in the beginning. You know, I just thought I was a terrible person because look at all the terrible shit I did, you know? And that's not true. I was, I was like, addic addiction is a mental illness and I was mentally ill when I was using. So everything I did when I was using was not who I am, you know? That's not who I am. I'm not a thief, I'm not a cheat, I'm not a liar. That's what the drugs and alcohol did to me. And today I don't have to live that way. You know, I lived honest and I live open and I live willing. And, and it's just a complete change. And it's, it has to be felt, you know. I, I can't convey it through, through to you guys enough. It's just a feeling that you have that's, you know, one of a kind. And it's, for me, it's probably different for you. And uh, if you're out there struggling, you know, give it a chance. You know, it took me three years to give it a chance. And, I wish I would have given it a chance the first time because, you know, it's amazing. It's a beautiful life to have and I don't wish addiction on anybody.